instead of with LeBron. Stephen A., what do you make of this? Well, first of all, it's accurate. Um, I, I don't know about shut the bleep up. I mean, it's entirely plausible because Tyron Lu does talk like that on occasion. Um, I, I know for a fact, and we touched on it on this show, uh, that he really, really checked LeBron, and a few people checked LeBron when they played Miami, was down by 30, and he's sitting up there hugging and yucking it up with Dwayne Wade. That really, really rubbed uh, a Tyron Lue and others the wrong way, and Tyron Lue called them on it. And to LeBron James' credit, he manned up and fessed up and said, you're absolutely right. It's not something that will happen again. I think that it could potentially be overblown because – they talk like that to each other. That's just their lingo, their vernacular. And there's no reason to sit there and highlight, shut the bleep up or whatever. Because, you know, dudes talk like that to one another from time to time. And it literally brushes off your shoulder. So it's nothing to make a big deal out of it. I can tell you that Tyron Lou has profound respect for LeBron James, as everybody on the Cavs do. How can you not? But where Ken Berger's uh, uh, report is accurate even more so and he does a damn good job so i'm certainly not trying to critique him or anything like that but i'm just saying i'm giving credit where credit is due where he's absolutely right is the kevin love component if you read this article kevin love was essentially relegated to being a spot-up shooter david black really didn't create anything else for him and kevin love was very very unhappy with playing that role and so because he was unhappy with playing that role, a lot of times when we saw him on the court and we speculated about him and LeBron and, you know, not getting along and all of this other stuff, Kevin Love may very well have had a problem with the system, per se, the system that was being employed. And LeBron James being on the court trying to execute the system, even though he didn't agree with it, in the end, you can see how acrimony can ultimately swell within the ranks. So what happens? Out goes Blatt. In comes Tyron Lue. And what does he do? He instantly gets Kevin Love the ball more. Not only that, it's not necessarily on, on the outside. Yeah, he's usually standing on the outside taking a three here or there. He's on a weak side when LeBron James is getting the ball on the block, whether it be the elbow or the block. But Kevin Love is there too. And he's getting touches in the paint area. And he's a more vital component of this offense because he's smart and he can play, and he can pass. There's no excuse not to utilize him. So Tyron Lue figured that out. Outside of that, all they've been doing, according to what they've told me, meaning the players and the coaches, because uh, obviously I've spoken to several of them over the last several weeks, they said what we're doing most is, A, we're resting, and, B, we're shooting all the time. Skip, I'm there at pregame the other night before game one. I watched Matthew Dellavedova go from the left corner to the wing, all beyond the three-point line, the left corner to the wing, to the key, to the right wing, to the right corner. He hit nine of ten three-pointers, nine of ten, Matthew Dellavedova, because they say he puts in the work and nobody maximizes his potential more than Matthew Dellavedova. And that seems to be something in combination with a LeBron James who's a workout warrior, who is fixated on his conditioning, who constantly stays on guys to keep themselves in tip-top shape and be disciplined enough to do whatever it takes. The combination of those two, obviously on opposite ends of the spectrum, a role player, a superstar, and everybody in between is following suit. That's what's going on here. It has a lot to do with Tyron Lue, make no mistake about it, because the players respect him and his vision for what he wants to do. But they're going out there and executing it because they can, because of the ability and the commitment of their superstar and a role player who deserves a hell of a lot more credit than I've ever given them. Hmm. I'm going to tell you how much, how highly I regard what I read in Ken Berger's story. We all know Steve Kerr was voted coach of the year for the regular season. Maybe it was some sympathy vote because he went through a, a horrible back issue that almost threatened his career at some point. We know that a lot of people made a case for Terry Stotts being the regular season coach of the year. I'm here to tell you, I think Tyron Liu is making a late charge for coach of the whole year. I'm talking about regular season and postseason. Tyron Liu is showing me things that are shockingly good to great. 
And this is yet another example of that. So Stephen A, if I do a step back here, and, and please respond to this, I look at LeBron, the, the totality of LeBron's career, I thought the best thing that happened to LeBron at age 26 was when he took his talents to South Beach and joined forces, not so much with Bosch, but with his best, best friend, best buddy, Dwayne Wade. I thought Dwayne was the best thing that could have ever happened to LeBron at age 26. He, he, he showed him the ropes. He showed him how you win basketball games at the highest level. He, he taught LeBron how to win a ring and then a second ring. And, and he was instrumental in, in just giving LeBron the peace and the comfort of knowing Dwayne's got his back. Dwayne's right there with him in the locker room, in the huddle, on the court. And then the second best thing that has ever happened to LeBron is that at age 31, he gets Ty Lu as his, his new head coach. And I think it's changing LeBron's later career professional life to have a guy that he already obviously respected. I kept telling you last year during the finals, and I, I, it, it seemed to happen almost on a nightly basis, and it, it, it made me laugh. But I, I kept saying, I've never seen anything like this. LeBron James would just ignore David Blatt. During the finals, he would put himself in the game or take himself out of the game with, without notice, like, I think I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna rest now, so I'm gonna go to the bench. And then David Blatt, we've seen him send in a sub. Nah, you, 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 you get back. We, we wanna keep the same five on the floor for this inbounds play. Never seen anything like that before. So LeBron was the unofficial head coach of the team, and you know and I know, it's tough to make that work because there's, there's gonna be some resentments on other players like, are we just chopped liver or what, what's going on here? And now LeBron is regarded obviously as a great player, as the best player on this team, but he's still a player with a head coach who has the last word. And so it was crucial whenever this happened, this shut up moment, it was crucial to just show the team, not LeBron, just show the team, I got this. I'll have the last word here. And if LeBron says, I'm good, then everybody's good. And, and they can actually become a basketball team. I just think it's essential. Well, I think it's great for LeBron James. All I'm saying is let's not act like something happened where, you know, Tyron Lou was just disrespectful to LeBron James. They're tight. He has tremendous respect for LeBron. Not to mention the fact that before any kind of conversation, whether it's him You're talking right. to LeBron about Miami or whether the whole situation with the huddle took place, before any of that happened, when Tyron Lue first took the job, Skip, you saw my interview with him yep. when he first got the job. He said one of the first things I did was have a talk with LeBron. You have to allow me to coach you. I have to treat you like I would treat any other player. I can't lead this team unless you allow me to do that. And LeBron James said, absolutely, no problem with it whatsoever. And so we have to look at it from that perspective and understand that we can't come across as saying, like, like you know, Tyron Lue, yeah, he's running the show, but the hell with LeBron. He has LeBron's support. Yeah. Because I don't care who you are as a coach. If you don't have the support of your superstar, you're not going to last. And you're not going to be that effective. Just look around. Look around. Think about history. You've covered this game for a long time, Skip, as you so eloquently state on a periodic basis. You've covered this game. Pick the star you want. Pick L My Magic in L.A. Pick Jordan in Chicago, pre-Phil Jackson. Pick A.I. in Philadelphia. Yep. Pick anybody you want. If you do not have the support of the star, yep. you will not succeed. You will and be so fired. Tyron Lue. That's yeah. right. Tyron Lue, is, Tyron Lue is succeeding yep. because LeBron supports him. So let's make sure we keep that in mind. Obviously, if a brand new coach had come in with little to no relationship with LeBron and had pulled that stunt in a huddle, shut up. Over. It's, it's over, man. It's, you, you have burned the bridge because you would humiliate LeBron in front of the, the rest of the players. Clearly, they had, he's, he was an assistant. He, I, I'm, I'm not saying that LeBron demanded that he be elevated into head coach, but, but clearly he was, he was LeBron's guy, that, that LeBron bless that that choice and so they absolutely had, yeah absolutely so, okay so they had rapport they had a connection they might have even had a discussion that that Ty Lue says hey at some point in front of the team 
I'm going to have to make it clear that I'm in charge. And LeBron clearly went along with it because they are functioning right now at the uh, highest level. Well, I'm saying it wasn't at any point. It was from the very beginning. Yeah. The moment he took over, they had that conversation. Yeah. And that was firmly established. And, and by the way, give David Griffin some credit because he's the general manager. He's the one that elevated Tyron Lue. Keep in mind that when he elevated Tyron Lue, Tyron Lue has never been the interim. He instantly got a three-year deal. Yeah. Prior to that, he was instantly the highest paid assistant in the game because he was perceived as being the heir apparent to David Blatt. This is a guy, Blatt, I'm sorry, Gri you know, uh, Tyron Lue, mm -hmm. that was Griffin's initial choice. Yep. It was Dan Gilbert no, who it. wanted David Blatt. Mm -hmm. Griffin always wanted Tyron Lue. Okay. And so when you look at it from that perspective, combined with the moves that he made to, 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 to buffer the, the, the roster of this franchise, it's the combination. Yeah, Tyron Lue's got a really good relationship with LeBron, and LeBron respects him, and that's cool. But he also has the support of the GM. Yeah who wants to prove to everyone that he could do this job, that this is his team, not LeBron's. Yep. And so the combination of that really puts Tyron Lue in a very, very comfortable position. It does, I agree. To lead. So you have gone out of your way lately to pay your respects to David Griffin for all the personnel moves that I he do. has made, okay? And I get you, and I'm with you on all of the above. But for me, from a distance, the single best new move, new addition that gives LeBron the best chance to win his third ring is this new head coach. That's just me. Absolutely. Sure. Above uh, no, 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 Channing no, no. Fry you're, you're, or whoever. Yeah. You're, to you're totally right. But what I'm saying to you is don't just look at the move. Look at the particulars. He could have brought him in there and gave him the interim tag. He instantly put him in there. And from day one, he had a guaranteed three-year deal, basically guaranteed two years, option on a third, partial guarantee, that kind of stuff. But he instantly, instantly made sure there is no interim here. This guy is going to be here next year. So all of this noise about, oh, my goodness, he's got to get to the finals. He's got to do this or that. Otherwise, he'll be gone, and they shouldn't have let go of David Blatt. That has never been in David Griffin's plans. It has never been part of the plan in Tyron Lue's eyes. Yeah. They made the decision from day one. I got you. Tyron Lue is the new head coach. I know. That helps is and, what I'm saying. And since that he helps. took over, to me, I don't see any other coach doing a better job in this period that Ty Lue has been the head coach of the Cleveland Cavaliers. I agree with that. I agree with that. But how do we ignore, you know, uh, uh, you know Kevin Love? How do we ignore... Chan and Fry. How do we ignore the fact that you have these people? Listen, I'm going to be critical when folks deserve it, and I'm going to be fair and complimentary when they deserve it. David Griffin, to me, did a bad job last year of getting, of securing the point guard slot. He should have had a backup to Kyrie Irving, all right? But outside of that, I thought he did a pretty good job. This year, I think the man has done a fantastic job. I got to give credit where credit is due because I'm damn sure going to call him out if I think he did a bad job. Yep. So why wouldn't I do it if I think he did a good job? I think he's done a really good job. I really do. We have more on new moves in just a minute, but of course tonight it all goes down. Game two will be just as easy for Lou and LeBron. That is 8.30 on ESPN as they look to take a 2-0 lead in the Eastern Conference Finals when they face the Raptors. Our coverage begins with NBA Countdown, charged by Dew with Sage, Jalen, and Doug. That is at 7.30 Eastern. Skip, you mentioned unofficial head coaches. That was uh, the case for the Knicks with Phil Jackson, but they've now found a new head man. We'll tell you who that is. And how Stephen A. can't wait to hear what he feels about this subject when we return. Just getting started.